All right, welcome back to Battle Ready. Thank you for watching. We actually just got done doing a big battle report. Um, should be fun. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, last time I asked uh, Drake a lot of questions and, you know, part of this Warhammer experience, as I've talked about before, is being able to do it father and son and spend a lot of time together um, away from iPads and video games and things like that. So uh, I asked him a lot of questions, and so now he wants to ask me some questions. I don't know what he wants to ask, mm -hmm. so uh, we'll just go for it and see how it happens. So Drake, what is up? Um, I was wondering how did you like first learn about Warhammer? Like, how did you, what was your very first time seeing the models on the table? Well, seeing them on the table, um, I would go to board game conventions. I love board games, mm -hmm. and I've been doing board games for many, many, many years. And I would go to conventions where they had all kinds of cool terrain and stuff set up and they just looked cool mm -hmm. uh, but I was never super interested in Warhammer because of the expense mm -hmm. and because of the complication and not that I don't like those things because obviously we're yes. playing now and I like it but I just didn't think I would have anybody to play with I already had a dedicated board game group two uh -huh. actually board game groups I just didn't have enough um, People. Time to yeah. like find more uh -huh. people just for that one game because like uh, even our normal games like, take like two hours. Oh yeah, and I mean I'd have to find a whole group of people because the people I play the board games with, even the more complicated ones, uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't be down for Warhammer. Yeah. So that yeah, I do you know, yeah. did you have chaos in the old world before you got Warhammer? Oh yeah, I've had chaos in the old world for a long time because it's a board game. Yeah, right? it's just in this Warhammer world. And uh, so yeah, so I th always thought it was cool, but it just I thought it wasn't for me, mm -hmm. and I was especially back then not interested and a little bit afraid of painting. I didn't like the idea of painting. I what? thought I would mess stuff up. But you've painted like ever since I've almost since I can remember you've been painting models. <laughs> almost since I can remember. No, I, well that's not true. But <laughs> I mean maybe if your memory's not very good, I guess. <laughs> but this I'm talking when I first saw Warhammer was before you were born. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. So back then, I didn't like painting at all. And since then, I've painted board game miniatures. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. Um, luckily, just doing it so much, I've gotten better at it. Yes. But it was never was... I like the finished product so that I can have a bunch of cool dudes on the, on the board. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not my favorite. It's still not yeah. my favorite. Mm -hmm. What else you got? So I was wondering, because um, I know you want, like to watch mini war gaming. Did that help you like start getting interested in the game? You know, interesting. I didn't. So there used to be a channel called Tab Tabletop, where they would play board games, and I hated it. What? Yeah, didn't like it at all. I just don't like watching other people play games. I only want to watch them myself. And mm -hmm. I had stumbled onto mini war gaming. Or in other battle bat rep sites, when I when we were very first getting into it, really? but I didn't know the rules. I uh -huh. I didn't know what they were talking we about. Like almost all of the rules when we very first. Played. Yeah, but this is even before that. Yeah. So I just I, I wasn't interested. It wasn't cool. Yeah. Um, but once we started to play, mm -hmm. I liked watching battle reports because the guys at Mini War Gaming are pretty fun, and not I can't say that about everybody. Some most people the personalities are just not enough. to to carry it through um, for me mm -hmm. but the thing I like about it is they they do weird stuff yeah. and they're not com they're not super competitive they don't they try to win but they're not yeah. um, doing the, the super optimized super competitive list that you would see at yeah. a tournament so you just get to see them do fun stuff and that's where I the first time I saw people retreat onto an objective or to do some of that stuff that mm -hmm. you know now we do yeah. and it's cool to get ideas about strategy and stuff like that mm -hmm. What else you got? So uh, um, I was wondering, when some of your very first Warhammer games, how did you feel about uh, the strategy about it? Like how you need strategy and how you sometimes you need luck on your side? Oh, that's one of the interesting things about it is the board games I tend to like are very low luck. There'll be some, but it's very low. And even randomness tends to be pretty low. I like games that are mostly non-random not entirely like kind of straightforward 
Well, where there's not a lot of dice rolling, oh. let's say. Cards, fine, that's some randomness. Sometimes you'll mix stuff up in a bag, that's a little bit of randomness. Um, stuff like that is, is fine, but I don't play a lot of games where there's just a lot of dice rolling, you don't know what's going to happen. But obviously Warhammer's like that. But Warhammer's cool because you get a lot of, uh, there's a lot of strategy, there's a lot yeah. of tactics. If you just rush your army forward and trust in the dice, you're, the dice are probably going to be bad to you. Uh, unlike me, because usually I almost every I think almost every role I've ever rolled in my life playing the game, I've gotten a six, <laughs> at least one, except for uh, the battle report we just did where my knight of shrouds was sad and never got a six. Yeah, well that's that happens. So um, Already. you do roll pretty well, but so. if you just smash forward, then you have done that before. It doesn't way back in the early game. Doesn't go well. Doesn't go too well. But the other thing I really like about it is the dice help tell a story. Yes. So, you know, you crash forward and you decide to attack and you roll really, really well. So like, for example, in our battle report today, mm -hmm. I had three desolators and Lady Olinder did a big wail and lifted her veil and, and suddenly I only had home. one desolator. At two home. So it's, it was just, uh, it was crazy. Because you got, you could see, you could just picture, at least I could in my mind. Yes, same here. You know, she's screaming and lifting the veil, and suddenly the Draca lines are rearing up and falling over, and their riders are keeling over and dying, and mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's pretty cool. So it's not so much about the winning or losing for me yeah. when it comes to Warhammer. It's about the story you come away with of, oh man, my guy was up against impossible odds and managed to eke out a victory or oh man my guy should have killed a bunch of dudes but he went in and he totally whiffed and then all the rasps hungrily ate him to bits afterwards so those kinds of stories those kinds of uh, uh, little narratives are really fun for me and that's okay. that's why I even like even if you're not playing player. a narrative game yeah I mean even in match play it's, it's pretty fun yeah so once you start how did you feel about the expense of the game? Uh, oh, it's very expensive. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of the expense of the game. I mean, it, it's cool that the it's very fun, mm -hmm. and the models are very, very, very good, um, especially compared to a lot of the board game miniatures that I've had before, which are fine. But the models in Games Workshop are just are just crazy good. But I, I'm not a big fan of the expense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, I get enough value out of it that I can play some Stormcast and some Rasps and we can you know, fight each other and, mm -hmm. and we make do, but it's not really, uh, if it was a little bit less expensive, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. er. When you first started playing your first couple of 2,000 point games, how, how did it feel about like having twice as many units? Honestly, it felt really fun. The um, 1,000 point games were, were cool to sort of mm -hmm. get a handle on things and kind of learn. learn the game. And I wouldn't mind doing some 1,000 point games again. I think that'd be fine. We can do, we can do that. Mm -hmm. But especially on the bigger table that AOS 2 had, mm -hmm. you needed 2,000 points worth. The 1,000 points just wasn't enough to mm -hmm. keep the army, um, keep the table occupied. Mm -hmm. There were whole sections where, especially with Stormcast or uh, Night Haunt, you just warp in, right? And yeah. of course, no one's there because there's just not enough places. Yeah. So, yeah, 2,000 would be good. And I think now 2,000 is good on the smaller table. The smaller table, I think, is really good. Mm -hmm. And if we want to do 1,000, we can do half the size and, and have a really good go of it. Mm -hmm. So, when you. Now that I'm doing more and more strategy, how does it feel when you're just barely, barely winning? Oh, it's great! It's great. I I love it. I love it when I I love it when I win. I love it when I lose. I love it when I barely win or barely lose. I and I think actually you haven't gotten a lot better at it. Today I think was our forty second play. Forty second, sub somewhere in the forties. And uh, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. And it was great. Mm -hmm. I, I think you've gotten better and better, and it's more challenging now. Whereas in the beginning, you would just, you know, march your guys forward and 
it was still fun, mm-hmm. but it was it was not really much of a challenge. Whereas now I'm constantly having to think about stuff and react to what you're doing and make plans, you know, a turn or more in ahead, and it's it's really been fun. Mm-hmm. So now that. Back way in the 1,000 point games, uh, when you had just small amounts of units, was it as fun for you now as it is 2,000 point? That's a good question. I guess it's hard to say. The I think I like it with the more with more units, just because there's more things you can do on the battlefield. I think I like that more. What do you think is the one big thing that you think one hammer should change? Like one thing that you want a lot. And like maybe four point oh. Four We're a little ways away from four Um But if you ever wanted that to happen, what would it be? I don't know. I really like the game the way it is right now. Could they I think the double turn mechanic or the random turn mechanic yeah. still needs just a little bit of work because it's so Getting two turns in a row is huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just huge in the game. And it all comes down to a die roll. I don't know. Maybe we could do it where the random turn wasn't a die roll. It was based on... Who killed know, more units? Maybe. Or who controlled the what? center. Maybe there's not an objective in the center, but who controls the center gets to decide. or Something like that so it's more game-focused. And So you're like, all right, well... I'm going to divert these guys away from this objective because I really want to Have enforce who gets the turn, right? Something like that. Or do it where the person who goes second always gets to remove an objective yeah, instead but of just on the that, third turn. Yeah, but if they did that, then you could just remove this objective, this objective, then this objective, then there would just be one objective. Yeah, you'd have to have plans that had a lot more objectives in them. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know exactly. I think that they could tweak it a little bit because the whole you get one command point versus you get two command points. I don't know that that's enough. That mm-hmm. that doesn't outweigh the benefit of getting two turns. In a row. Yeah. And um, I personally, I would like it if scoring was at the end of the round because a double turn would mean you get double the points. Yes, I actually I think that would be a, go a long way to addressing the double turn. Where you got points at the whoever controlled the objectives at the end of the round, the because points. that way after going second might be beneficial. Yes. Because and then people might <clears> double <throat> turns as much. You could decide where to go. So, yeah, maybe you went second, and then hey, you go first, and you get that double turn again. But then the other guy gets to go second, so he gets to go last before scoring happens. That could be something too. Yeah. Like I said, I, I don't think it's way out of whack. I'm not. So I know some people hate the the random turn. I'm not one of those people. But um, there's things that they could do to, to make it just a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Hold on, there's something down here. Okay. Um, what do you think? How did it feel collecting so many armies and painting so many armies? Expensive. <laughs> yeah, we got a little. I probably got a little carried away, but I just wanted to experience a bunch of different armies. I think we had eight. Uh, I'm kind of right now. Nine. Well, we can't use the little spite yes. that you have. I didn't have to pay for those ones, so that's good. Um, I have to. The eight armies. It's, it's a lot, but it's fun. I mean, I like the idea of playing a little Stormcast, then playing a little Daughters, then playing a little Zeech. It's just fun to have different little things you can do, and, and I like that. What do you think is your favorite army in the entire game? Oh, man. Either Zinch. Uh, one of the Chaos Armies. I love really? Zinch, Nurgle, and Slanash are all super fun to me. They're not... Especially Slanash is not the most powerful right now. It's very highly pointed. But... Um, they can do some stuff that's so fun. I just love the, mm-hmm. with Slanesh, I love being able to run and shoot and run and charge, and Sigvald's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. With Nurgle, it's just, it's just fun to have those guys on the table looking all gross. And Zinch's ability to sort of use his fake dice and bring stuff in, and all of their abilities to summon 
are so good. Yeah, I'm I'm high on all those ones. What do you think is uh, your least favorite army? One army that you hate. I don't hate any of them. Or hate, but like don't like as much as the others. Gosh, I don't I'm know. I'm pretty sure you've played every single army. I have, well, not every single army. I've played all the ones we own. Yeah, but every single army we have. Now, Goose Fight, it's going to be a little more hard for Goose Fight because you only played them once with 1,000. Yeah. I don't know. I like them all. I don't, I don't think I could say I just like anyone. What do you think is the hardest thing to do when you're facing against my night on horses? Ugh, I don't like... I like to move forward to the objectives and then try to control them. Mm -hmm. But it's very scary to do that because I end up leaving my back line and then you've got ghosts that show up in the yeah. back. I don't like that. Oh, that's a little bit hard for Nighthawk because they're almost all of them only move six inches, so they're like steadily moving up, and it's, but it's a lot harder. Yep, I mean, that's, that's the thing. Is, uh, every army's got pluses and minuses. Mm -hmm. Now, with Nighthawk, it's most likely moving. Well, I don't know. They're pretty mobile. They can pop up anywhere. Mm -hmm. And with your two generals, you can summon a unit to your general, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. They they have some good mobility. But just like on the ground, walking. Without yeah, they're walking. They're slowish. Yeah. It's as fast as rock guts. It's as fast as trolls. Well, faster than dwarves. It's faster than stormcast. Oh, yeah. Stormcast move five. And Nurgle. Yep. Almost all foot people. By one inch. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Is that, is that good? Um, I have put some questions about painting. How do you feel when you're painting? Okay. Painting's not my favorite. I, uh, I like the result, so I do it. Mm -hmm. And I like some of the things about it. But I know a lot of people find it very relaxing, or they enjoy painting and that sort of stuff. I'll put on a battle report or a podcast or an audiobook or something and do it so that my game looks good. But painting's not my favorite. I really enjoy building the models and I really, really enjoy playing. Painting, if, if I could get that done for free because I'm too cheap to pay for somebody to do it, mm -hmm. I, would do, I would give up painting if somebody else did it. So, what do you think um, is the hardest army to compete against? Uh, I mean, the ones that we have? Yes. That's a good question. Daughters of Cain is pretty tricky. Pretty, pretty tricky. Especially with Marathi. You have to really mm -hmm. deal with her in a special way. But the Night Hunts have that 6 of 4. And they ignore all around. Yeah, no, none of the armies are, are easy. You asked me which one was the hardest to deal yes. with. I would my say God is a shame. My pick would be either Gloomspite Yet, Gloomspite, or or uh, Nighthawk. Both are good. Both are good. The reason I say Gloomspite is because. What about Caradron? Caradron is another hard one, but once you get into combat, especially with the Gloomspite, they're trolls. Your your ships are done. Yeah, so Caradron against Gloomspite would be hard. But, um, unless I just ran away. Yeah, you just, you just kept on flying high. Maybe that's how you deal with the Gloom Spite, with those trolls. Mm -hmm. Unless, or if you're building an all squig army, it might be harder because, or an all squig and grot army, because there will be huge ranks of shooters and stabbers everywhere, so you mm -hmm. couldn't drop down. Mm -hmm. Even though I have almost no yits in my army, it's mostly squigs. No grots, yeah. I don't have grots standards, but I have grots riding squigs. Yep. I have about 16 grots in my army. 16 grot people. Yeah, something like that. Loom boss, hoppers, hoppers, bounders. And the loom boss. Ah, yeah, the loom boss. So, and the loom boss has uh, six grots on his model. Two of them being like mini grots. So. Mm. Okay. That's it. Cool. All right, well, this has been, uh, I hope, Hopefully this helped you get to know us a little bit and our channel a little bit. And we're going to continue to, to put out videos from time to time. And I think uh, it's every Monday we upload one. Well, that's what we're doing now. We'll try to continue it, but with work schedules and school schedules, we, we make no promises. <laughs>
it may change from Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday. We post one every day. But we'll uh, we'll try to do that, and as we do battle reports, we'll uh, we'll try to do those too. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for watching, and uh, thank you for visiting Battle Ready.